And so I'm going to have you turn to that New Testament book, the book of James, and we are in the fifth chapter there. James chapter 5. And we'll be looking today at these final thoughts from verse 19 and 20. 19 and 20. So James says, my brothers, which in the Greek actually um, means both female and male. My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will, from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Let's just pray. Father, in these few moments, we pray that your spirit would open our hearts and our minds to what you might have to teach us from your word this morning. We pray that you would do above and beyond what we could think or imagine, that our hearts and our souls and our minds would be transformed so that we can be the men and the women that you would have us to be. And we pray this for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. So I, I believe here in these final two verses, there is really um, one core, one main, uh, one central idea that, that James surfaces. But before understanding um, that key principle, there are essentially three questions that have to be answered by the reader. And here they are. What is my truth? What is my sin? And what is my destiny? We kind of have to wrestle those through before we can unpack the, the, the main principle that, that James wants to surface here at the end of his letter. So he comes to the end, and uh, I think you would agree with me that we have seen over and over again that James um, has a very practical approach in him sharing what God lays on his heart. He has uh, an honest approach, a kind of a common sense, almost in your face at times kind of approach to real life and real life issues that um, somehow interweave with God's principles that he has laid down for us. And so now, and so now uh, James comes to these final thoughts and they, they really center in when you stop and take a look at what's here, they really center in on the gospel message. He's talking very practically about people who either have fallen away from their spiritual journey, or maybe they never even had a spiritual journey. And so in the midst of these final concluding thoughts, there are these three questions that, that we have to ask ourselves when it comes to our own personal life. First, what is my truth? What is my standard? Um, what is my guide for this life for me? Then, what is my sin? Do I feel that I have any sin? And if so, what do I do, what do I plan to do with that reality uh, that I know is there in me? And then, what is my destiny? 
Um, where do I plan to proceed after this life? Where am I going to spend my forever, my eternity, when I die? Three very, very, very important things for us to take a step back and consider and think through. Last week, we recognized that all of us are fragmented people. We are all broken people in, in so many ways. And in life, we, we have this default uh, mechanism that seems to kick in where we want to hide from this reality of brokenness because we're afraid of what others might think of us if they really knew who we were. Our insecurities, our faults, our fantasies, our struggles, our, our sin. And rather than dealing authentically and, and genuinely with these realities as we ought to, um, we wear masks, don't we? We, we? we cover over who we really are. We, we cover over ourselves and we, as I said, deceive to be perceived as something or someone that we are not. And we all have a story. We all could explain how we go about setting up these masks that we hide behind. We wear the masks out in the world, in our workplaces, in our neighborhoods, but we also wear masks here in the church. Why? Because it feels better. It feels more safe. It, it makes me feel somewhat secure. It allows me to hide in my own little make-believe world, if you will. And essentially, I can be who I want to be without actually being who I really am. And pretending, um, living in this make-believe world, is a great vice when, when, it, when it comes to deception. It's a great way to hide. But I think we would all agree that in the end, it, it sells us short on living our life to its fullest. In other words, the masquerade parties that that we attend, they get old. And having to put on that mask and take it off and put it on and take it off and put it back on and take it off, that gets tiring, doesn't it? It just doesn't feel right at the end of the day to pretend that I'm someone that I'm really not. And I think James gets this. I think he understands this, the, the, the pull to deception, this pull to, to, to live life in this make-believe world. And this is why I think that he surfaces, first of all, this principle of truth. He says, if anyone wanders from the truth. And so you see, until I wrestle, wrestle this out in my own life, until I, I wrestle through this question of what is my standard for living? By whose rules do I live? What, what is the guidebook? That, that I'm giving my life to. 
Until I clarify that standard of truth, um, I will most certainly live in a world of misery and confusion and instability and, and, and fear. Because I'm just going along, trying to find the way, like everybody else in the world. And when we get caught in that channel, there's a lot of instability there. There's a lot of fear. When, when tragedy strikes, who do I hold on to? When I need direction for a, for a big decision that I have to make, who do I go to? And so we have to wrestle this through. What is my standard? What is my benchmark? Benchmark. What is, what is the truth by which I'm going to do life? And, and all of that is very important because whether you like it or not, truth matters. Truth matters. In fact, your everyday life, your, your values, your principles, your future, even your eternity rests on what you believe to be truth. Now, we're here this morning because either we believe in God and his ways as being our truth, or we're here because we want to test those waters for ourselves, which is a good thing. To see if just maybe God and his word is possibly this standard of truth that we've been looking for, that we've been searching for that our hearts have been longing for. In Isaiah chapter 45, God says these incredible words. He says, I, the Lord, speak truth. I declare what is right. So if I choose to place my trust in that declaration, that proclamation, if I choose to, to place my trust in that testimony and confess that this supreme and sovereign creator God exists, then I can know for sure that there is truth with a capital T. It settles it for me if I choose to believe in the creator of this universe and what he has said to me in the truth of his word. You see, God is offering to us himself in that declaration, that's exactly what he's doing. He's inviting us in. And when he offers us himself, he has to offer us truth as well because he is truth. He is the author of truth. He is the standard of truth. And so he knocks at, at, at the heart, at the door of our heart. And, he, and it's like he's saying, I have the truth, I am the truth. Are you willing to believe in me? With that reality comes this fact that we don't make him, we don't shape him, we don't define him. Okay? He makes all things. 
He shapes all things. He defines all things. And as Jesus, God's perfect representative, as, as Jesus came to earth, what did he proclaim to us as being representative of this creator God, this Father, this heavenly Father, this supreme and sovereign God. What did he come to proclaim to us? Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. You see, Jesus is ultimately saying, if you want to have a personal relationship with this God of all truth, then you receive my gift of grace, and I will provide the way for you. It's like Jesus is the key holder, and we're the ones looking to enter.